Hey everyone, yes, I'm right next to the church here, literally right in front of me, to that way and that way. I've just shown you the um, Andy Gibbs marker. Now, just don't get confused in case anyone's wondering, wait a minute, how can that be there? And I thought Andy Gibb was buried out in Los Angeles. He was, but that is, I think that's what they call like a cenotaph when they can, or a memorial plaque when they put a marker there for someone else, even though they're, they're interred somewhere else and that. So yes, so I believe because Robin was around here for years, I don't, I don't know about um, Barry, but um, or Morris, but I have a feeling, I think they all were sort of local-ish to around this area and that. So of course they put a marker there. Andy. I'm not sure if that was put there way before um, Robin passed away or if it was added um, when Robin was interred there. Yes, we are going to go over literally, well, that, there you go. That's his headstone there now. The reason why I've done it this way is because um, it's not surprising, I suppose, but um, there was quite a number, of, there was a whole group of um, ladies. You may have seen them when I was walking by, they were outside. That, by the way, that house, or that building, that is the gatehouse lodge that's like the sort of, um, like the beginning part of Robin's house. Robin's house is literally behind that estate, you know, it's very, very private, as you can imagine. And that and because of course they were all huddled around his grave and I should have thought of that that it was quite a um you know it reminds me almost of Tolkien you know he does get visitors regularly and that but you know I've done a lot of graves and you've come along with me for several of them but and that but do you know what this has really when I say this has been on my bucket list and that this seriously has been bearing in mind that Robin passed away hard to believe now he passed away 10 years ago on the 20th of May and that and you may think my god she definitely has done her research in that since she does I don't know that date always is in here for me because I feel very similar to the way I did when I finally got to Alexander's, Alexander Litvinenko's grave because one, I've been wanting to come here for a long time, two, the fact the other half has been wanting me to come and document this for a long time. But see, the reason why, I mean, I'm not saying that all the graves I don't visit aren't meaningful, they are, but this is like, this is up there on my list because... I have been, I've been, a, first things first, I've been a Bee Gees fan for as long as, well, not since literally I was a kid, but I've been a Bee Gees fan for a long time, and Robin was always my favourite Bee Gees, the way he used to just, oh my god, that voice. I mean, I know of everyone always goes on about how Barry had the absolute amazing falsetto, but for me and my mum, and that Robin was always our favourite BG. And as you can imagine, you know, hearing that he had cancer when he was, but even though he was battling on, you know, we, even though I knew it was bad, you know, we were all hoping that somehow he would make it, his way through it. But that day, May 20th in 2012, that literally was one of those days, the days, the day the music died for me because he literally was one of my f song, you know, singer, idols. And furthermore, it's even more poignant for the fact that to me, if he literally had to pass away, and of course he did 10 years ago, the fact that he died on what I think I consider being the most thought-provoking, the most haunting, the most best-written thing that I think he could have ever have written out of all of the songs and albums that he wrote. The fact that he managed to write complete, and at least he did see it release, 
was his Titanic Requiem that he wrote with his son RJ. No, that's not Robin Jr., that's Robin John, actually. But he's always known as RJ Gibb and that. And if I had to go one step further, the only song that he sings on don't cry alone which he sings with rj and to me that is my favorite song of all time from robin and that if you were to ask me what my favorite bg song was mm, that is more tricky but that yeah that is a bit of that always that always used to be easy it was always i started a joke hmm literally because of course robin sings the lead on that but no it's actually um it is a toss-up between I Started a Joke and Wedding Day for me now. Sorry, sweetie, but it is. I know you're going to say, oh, you soppy one. So, yeah. So, of course, I will add um, some more information after this. But just the basics, of course, is um, Robin, as you'll see on the headstone. He was born in 1949 on the Isle of Man. Then they moved to Manchester. Like I said, I'll, I'll give you the more specifics of when they moved there. Then they moved out to Australia. And then, of course, when they made it big back in, I think, if I remember correctly, I think their first hit, which was their first number one, was 1967. If my memory serves me correctly, I think, but I could be wrong. And that, so, and... Before I go over here, this is the other thing that you may have, I may, I've, I've probably given like a little hint of it in the title. But here's the other thing that I wanted to make sure that I documented on this because of course I am fully aware that pe lots of people have documented hit this grave on YouTube. But once again, no one has ever shown um, the... Um, how to actually get to here but more importantly no one has ever mentioned it before and that now i assume some people must be aware of it because i found it really really easy and it was in the public domain and that but the one thing about this headstone i am a little bit sad about is that there's no mention of morris on here and what i mean by that is when morris um died here we go guys i've had to um wait again because once again um other fans have come round. of course i've waited for them to go so let's go over and finally visit the final resting place of robin uh, what's his middle name he does have a middle name does he robin hugh gibb cbe So as you can see, and that, yeah, absolutely bedecked in memorabilia. It's well documented on YouTube that there's, um, there's a young lady that comes all the way from London twice a week to lay flowers here, even 10 years on, and she still does that. So, yeah.
farewell Robin and Andy and Morris because as I was trying to say earlier but unfortunately I've got too many people in front of me and that yeah the reason why I say about Morris is because when Morris died in 2003 and he was cremated they used his ashes to create gemstones and that and then what they did is when they came here for Robin's funeral and then buried him here of course they at Robin's stone that he'd had in his possession they um they interred that stone with him in his coffin so technically that is not only Robin's grave but it's also part of Morris's grave now you may think what on earth am I doing here right now this was something that Paul from Unusual Things asked me to try and do because he was unable to do it when he came to visit Robin's grave and that and that because this is all part of Robin's house and that Yes, I am aware that this is private property, but he was asking me, ah, I think that could be where he was on about. He said, is there any chance you could try and sneak around the back, you know, go down the side of it and see if you can have, see if you can get a look of the house from the side, maybe. So without being too intrusive, even though time is running away with me a little, I'm going to have a go. So come along with me, guys. So the answer is, Paul, I've had a look at the back, but no, I, I definitely think this was probably one of the reasons why Robin might have loved living here, because it is so private. It looks like I think he lived on a whole estate as such, but yeah, I definitely think his house is probably somewhere in that direction, but it's literally completely masked by trees, but that's fair enough, you know, after all. Do you want like a lot of pig and toms looking in your back garden after all? I know I wouldn't. So, yeah, probably somewhere in there. So that's the best I could do, Paul and everyone else. So I hope you've enjoyed this more extensive and long video of the final resting place of Robin Gibb. So, Tata from St. Mary's Church in Tame, T-H-M-E, I think it's pronounced. Mwah. Thanks, guys.